okay as promised I will post the video on this the author's experience connecting in Manila I said awful connecting in Manila on Philippine Airlines so here is this article by Ben Schlapp Schlappick and he wrote this February 18 this was last year that when I wrote about the Philippine Airlines ticket that I booked many readers warned me that the connection experience at Manila Airport is the worst in the world I don't want to say that I dismissed what people were saying but I figured they hadn't been to as many awful airports as I've been to after all I've gotten to the point where <laughs> I'm almost enjoyed transiting Cairo Airport I didn't really I didn't really read that one but I've been I was in Cairo Airport myself a few years ago it was kind of confusing <laughs> When, when, uh, where was I going? Oh, yeah. I had to, I had to transfer, take another plane to get to, uh, Jordan. Right? And, uh, it was kind of confusing because the place I ended up was, like, where you, where you were exiting, like, where you go to immigration. And there wasn't really anything to really tell you. And I went and asked, and they told me, yeah, you, you have to go in this direction. So I could understand where he's coming from, you know. But I don't think it's as bad as uh, <coughs> what this guy experiences here. Let's say, uh, well, folks, we may not have the, a fancy award show filled to the brim with D-list celebrities, but I am ready to give a first ever, ever OMAAT award. I'm not familiar with that acronym. Manila Airport's award win winningly by connection experience, connecting from Terminal 2 to Terminal 1 in Manila, Philippine Airlines ground experience. Bottom line, Manila Airports Award, oh, this is right, Manila Airports Award, winningly by connection experience. I can officially say that connecting and Philippine Airlines at Manila Airport is the worst, worst single airline hub transfer experience. I strongly believe this is true. I'm referring specifically to the connection experience at a carrier's hub. Not everyone will have to transfer terminals in Manila. And I assume it's significantly less bad if you're connecting in the same terminal. However, for those having to change terminals, good luck. I totally understand airport lo logistics are extremely complicated. And I'm not sure if this is Philippine Airlines fault, Manila, Airli Manila Airport's fault, or a combination of both. The reality is that as a passenger, that's not really our problem. What made this connection experience so bad? My bags were screened five separate times. Well, that's true. In the Philippines, you enter the airport, and as soon as you enter the airport, you put your stuff, there's an extra machine there, you know? And then not long after that, you go through, it's like, well, gee, you know what I mean? It's like, if you haven't caught anything, what are you going to catch after? And then when you get to the gate itself, especially if you come into the United States, there's another extra machine there. So it's like, wow. It's really amazing. There's no way to make a sterile connection. And by that he means, you know, you, you remain in you remain in the terminal. So you don't have to like be going through security again. You have to go outside. 
external connection, just stay inside. I had to wait over 30 minutes for a bus. Most people I interacted with were rude for a country that's otherwise known for hospitality. The airline doesn't even operate their own lunch in the terminal, out of which their most premium flights operate. Connecting from Terminal 2 to Terminal 1 in Manila, my flight from Taipei arrived at Terminal 2, while my flight to Toronto was departing from Terminal 1. I, I think this, I think term, um, Philippine Airlines has their own terminal also. That might be the confusion here too. Because when I, when I came in, I was not their terminal. I think I came in maybe at Terminal 1. So it was a bit confusing. The first thing to note is that there's no real signage or information about what you should do. I had asked the flight attendant on my flight from Taipei about how I should transfer, and he told me I had to clear immigration. I went up to an immigration counter and then was yelled at and pointed to another guy. I showed him my connecting boarding pass. Then he walked me through the immigration checkpoint and to the Philippine Airlines transfer desk. There the agents took a photocopy of my boarding pass and handed me a stamped piece of paper. And then that guy escorted me back to the immigration counter where an immigration officer sort of let me into the country. Right, <laughs> where it's like, uh, if you if you go to Hong Kong and I've done it, you know, like going to the Philippines. I've gone to, I've got off the plane in Hong Kong, and then there's like uh, a type of train system you take, and then you get in that, and then you go to some other side of the terminal or what what have you to board your 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 Cathay Pacific to the Philippines. You don't have all this bunch of bull like in the Philippines all this stuff like this guy was talking about Hong Kong is very very efficient you don't have <laughs> you don't have all this stuff going on in Hong Kong you tr you trans you transferring you don't have to see anybody you know you just come coming through I don't even think you go through security I don't remember that like like what this guy was saying here I don't remember that in Hong Kong you know so let's see here in the arrivals hall signage was bad not to mention the arrivals area is is either under construction or was under construction many years ago but they just gave <laughs> they just gave up <laughs> based on appearances the latter seemed to be the case that's kind of funny. It's like it's either they uh, they it's under construction or under or maybe they just play and gave up. You know, it's like okay, we we'll just finish what we we just stop. We won't continue anymore. What we doing at around 11:55 a.m. I found the ITTL shuttle bus area where I had to have my bag screen again. I found that odd, that odd initially where my bags being screened because we had been dropped off airside. Hmm. And they show here uh, screening area Manila Airport ITTL shuttle bus station. Have a seat, I was told. I asked when the bus would arrive and was told 12.30 p.m., right? So I had to sit in this room without air conditioning and wait for 35 minutes. Now, if you haven't been to the Philippines and you sit in, <laughs> in a room without air conditioning, that's no joke. 
because the Philippines is a hot country, you know. You get you get off you get out of that airport and uh as soon as that door opens up and you step outside you get a, a blast of hot air in your face. It's like welcome to the Philippines. So yeah, you have it here. Philippine Airlines free shuttle service for passengers connecting to a PAL flight or a cold share flight with A and A in terminals one or three. Your transfer will arrive within thirty minutes upon registration at the transfer desk. And it shows estimated travel time from terminal two to terminal one, ten minutes, terminal two to terminal three, fifteen minutes. Sure enough, at twelve thirty PM the shuttle bus showed up. Okay, there's a bus right here. I am not sure where exactly we were driving. Were these just the roads under the airport or was this some sort of secure area? If the former, why did we need to have our bag screened? Shuttle bus ride to Manila Terminal 1. This bus just dropped us off in the departure area, so then my bags had to be screened once again to even enter the terminal. That's the Philippines for you. Manila Airport Security Screening. Then I had to go through immigration and a full security check again. Fortunately, I beat the rush because it's my understanding that the security lines can be really bad certain hours of the day. Right here. So you can see why Filipinos are probably <laughs> the most patient people in the world. Maybe you have the patience of Remember that man Job, spelled J-O-B in the Bible, Job? He was the most patient, <laughs> the most patient. He probably was Filipino, Job in the Bible. What's really strange is that at this point, I was already airside, and this is all one terminal. However, for whatever reason, they tried to restrict what parts of the terminal you can walk into for example take the below pier that was a there was a security guard trying to restrict who could walk down this hall stop where do you think you're going the lounge isn't this where it is and what is the name of the lounge p a g s s lounge Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Does anyone know why they care what part of the terminal you walk into? I'll review the launch as such in the next installment. Even at the carrier's hub on some of the most premium flights, you're still using a contract launch. The fun didn't end there. Each individual gate is partitioned off, and you have to go through yet another sec security screen in there, yeah, at the gate, when you enter the gate. And one thing, before you go to that gate to wait for your plane, you might as well use the restroom, because I remember that, you know. Once you, once you... Once you go there to be seated in that waiting area by the gate, it's like no going back out unless you you want to go through s the screening process again, you know, with the x-ray and all this stuff, removing your shoes and all this nonsense. Yeah, that's how it is in the Philippines. Manila Airport Departure Gate. What this guy is saying here, I had experience. Well, I didn't have to transfer from another uh, terminal. If 
luckily. The only time I think I had was to transfer was when I flew a uh, domestic in the Philippines. Like coming from Cebu and going to another part like Palawan. Then I had to then I had to get out the terminal and go to another another one. I believe I was flying uh Cebu Pacific. I took the below picture over an hour before departure, so it really doesn't do justice to how full the gate area got. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there are a good bit of people standing there. So he's saying there were a lot more people before he took that picture. Before boarding started, they also announced that elderly passengers could board with wheelchair passengers. And I'm not exaggerating, I say that probably half of the passengers identified as such, meaning as elderly, and then proceeded to get in line and stand for 10 minutes. <laughs> everybody, everybody is elderly. On uh on the plane, everybody is elderly. That seems counterproductive in terms of trying to make the experience as seamless for everyone as possible. Well, you know what? The thing about the Philippines is, if you're looking for customer service in the Philippines, you'll be like uh, you know that that man, the philosopher Diogenes in Greece, who was looking for an honest man <laughs> with a lamp, with a, a lit lamp at midday when the sun is shining and he was looking for an honest man. You're looking for customer service in the Philippines, you're not going to find it. If you do find it, you're lucky. A lucky son of a gun. Because it's not really set up that way. Philippine Airlines ground experience bottom line. I truly believe the Philippine Airlines ground experience in Manila is the worst <laughs> in the world when you have to change terminal. My bags were screened five times. Signage was bad. <laughs> I had to wait over 30 minutes for a bus and more. Right? In, in airports, it should be, those buses should be coming frequently, not 30 minutes, you know. Like maybe every five minutes. I can't think of any other airline in the world where hop transfer on the same airline is this complicated. <laughs> Welcome to the Philippines, my buhai. I fully acknowledge this likely isn't entirely or even mostly Philippine airline fault. However, if the airline and airport want to promote Manila as a connecting hub and want Philippine Airlines to improve, big work needs to be done when it comes to the tr transfer option. Either operations need to be consolidated in a single terminal or there needs to be a better, more streamlined option for connecting between terminals. So that's uh, his comments. To, to those who have uh, transferred between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2 at MNL Manila, how did you your experience compare to mine? Can anyone think of a worse hub airport transit experience? Well, from what I remember, when I was in the Philippines and I flew them domestic, they have their own terminal, and I remember flying into that, but with their own terminal being as domestic, you don't have to deal with customs, so I think maybe that's the problem right there. I'm not sure, maybe somebody could correct me, but I think what it is is that once you're dealing with international flights, they need customs, you know, or immigration. So this is why they go into Terminal 1. Other, other than that, it's like how American Airlines here, a GFK, they got their own terminal, like British, 
British Airways too. They got their own terminal, from what I remember when I used to work over there at JFK. So if you come in in British Airways, you fly right into uh, the British Airways terminal. American Airlines, you come in on, you fly right into uh, American Airlines terminal. You don't have to finagle around or so forth, you see. So there are a few exceptions here in New York, like I think Delta, they may they may have their own terminal, but if you if you come in, in domestic, you go to a different terminal. If you go in, like uh, if you go in international, then it's different or so forth. So I think this is where the issue is, being that immigration is involved. This is why the order had to go to a different terminal. But if you were flying like let's say Cebu or Palawan or so forth, then the experience won't be like that. It would be you just you just come in and that's it. And you go out, stay in the same terminal. Okay, so for those who didn't see my, my other my other video, I posted a video about Philippine Airlines is filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in New York. That's not that far from where I live. There's a bankruptcy court over here. Um, not that far. So, Chapter 11. So, they're going to restructure. That's a shame because um, I flew I flew on Philippine Airlines two years ago, September 2019. And it was great because it was non-stop. I think it was like 16 hours, 40 minutes, and so forth. And I remember in the days when I used to work at JFK, um, they used to be Northwest. And Northwest would bring in uh, a number of Filipinos. Northwest and what other airlines? I think like maybe Korean and so forth. But the thing is, by then, they always went through Alaska. They stopped in Alaska and they, they refuel in Alaska. I think it might have been Fairbanks, one of those cities. And those were the days when you flying from the Philippines to New York was like maybe 22, 24 hours. So by the time you reach here, you're really tired. <laughs> Plus the time difference too. It takes probably a few days to really get yourself together and be oriented to what's going on. So that was a different experience for me because I've gone to the Philippines before and uh, I flew like um, Japan Airlines, I flew United Airlines, and Cathay Pacific going to Hong Kong. And I think like going to Hong Kong is like one of the best. You know, you don't have all this crazy stuff this guy just mentioned here. Um, you go in there, you don't have all this screening and all this number of screening going there and people screening and taking stuff out, removing your shoes and all this stuff. You don't have all that stuff in, in, in Hong Kong. At least when I went to Hong Kong years ago, you know. And, it, and it's funny because the last time I was in Hong Kong, I think I was coming from, I believe it was v Vietnam, yeah. And I had to go to Hong Kong. And it was on Cathay Pacific. And then we were waiting there and there was no 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 crew. There was no crew at all for the for the flight. So they had to put us up in a hotel and they said, Well, the flight was supposed to leave like I think uh, like after four, five PM. And they say we'll leave like 10 a.m. But what's interesting is that, <coughs> so we had to fill out these forms, immigration form. I wasn't expecting that. Fill, fill, fill it out. 
and then the immigration officer stamp 90 days imagine that <laughs> so i i i got like um a stamp in my passport for up to 90 days i could stay in hong kong <laughs> And I was only going to be in Hong Kong for like maybe 12 hours or so, a little more. Yeah, a little more than that because leaving at 10 in the morning, the flight. Whereas like if you go to the Philippines and you go to immigration, they give you like 30 days. If you want to stay longer, you have to you have to pay. You have to go to the one of the local immigration offices and you know get in line pay a fee to extend i think they extend like 59 days or something like that so hong kong is an interesting place because hong kong is a place where i know a lot of filipinos go to work like domestic and other stuff like that probably in it and other stuff and um you know they they gave me 90 days and then when I went to the hotel, the hotel was like, you can just walk from the o from the airport. It's a short walk. And then um, we, we had like, wow, an amazing meal, like dinner, you know. It was one of those uh, buffet style. So many different kinds of food to eat. I had a room all to myself. I'm like, wow, how do these people manage to have all these rooms already set up to accommodate all these passengers from this plane, you know? And then in the morning too, I had a buffet breakfast. It's like, wow, choices, so many different choices and so forth. This was uh this happened in 2015. That's when I went through Hong Kong. That time. So that's that's a completely different different experience. You know, going to Hong Kong, you don't have all this all this crazy stuff with all this um security checkpoints and stuff like that. I don't know how it is now with with with, with China. You know, with China seeming to be controlling a lot of stuff in Hong Kong now. I don't know how the airport is run now, but <coughs> I can only say when when I went in there and the Hong Kong people, you didn't have like a lot of, uh, they, didn't, they didn't ask a lot of questions. And I've been to Hong Kong before, prior to that, where I spent time in Hong Kong, you know. They just take your passport, stamp your passport, give you 90 days, that's it. You see, very, very easy to get into Hong Kong. <laughs> no big, no big deal at all. You know, the, f the Philippines is very, very, um, very bureaucratic. They're very bureaucratic. I think they, I think they learned that from, from Spain. Maybe that's where they got that bureaucracy from, Spain. The British too. The British tend to be bureaucratic with their paper and so forth. But the Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, they didn't take that from the British. Getting into Hong Kong is a breeze or transit in Hong Kong. It's really a breeze. All right. So look forward to making another video when it comes to travel. Something interesting is always out there in the travel forums.